Good morning. My name is Miss Kennedy, and I teach at Verona Elementary, and this is my fifth grade science class. All right, so today's class, we are going to be exploring. So while we are exploring this time, make sure you open your mind. You use appropriate senses, so like your smell, your touch, your taste, your listening, and things like that. Also, make sure you stay on topic, but you are also being respectful. Not respectful just to me, but to your group members and to one another. All right, what we're going to do, we are going to be talking about changes in motion, but when objects collide, so when objects run into one another. But before we get into that, let's talk about forces. What are the two different types of forces? I could do this to something, or I could do this to something. Milan, what are the two different types of forces? Yes, so pulling. Pulling something towards me. Does everybody pull something towards them? Let's pull, everybody pull. And then if you push, you push like this, push away. So our focus today, we're gonna to be able to ask questions, predict outcomes about changes in motion, and you'll be able to interpret data in a graph, a chart, and a diagram related to force and motion of different objects. So a collision, a collision happens when two objects, so it takes two things, two things to happen, when they run into each other. When objects do run into each other, what happens? What happens when two things run into each other? I'll take a few people. Austin, what happens? The energy bounces back. Okay, the energy can bounce back. What else, Luke? They can like fall over. Okay. And, like, okay, so if you're running into each other, things might fall over or something could break. Aiden? If you don't have your seatbelt on the car, it's, it's going to stop, but you're going to keep going. Oh, so you use even when you're in a car, and if you're in a seatbelt, you get in a car crash, the seatbelt stops you from doing what story? What does the seatbelt stop you from doing? Yes, stopping from the first seat in front of you. Last person, Christopher. Oh, so when two things collide, it can also force things to stop. Good. So let's look at another example of what happens when two objects collide. So we see that they're playing bubble soccer. And what's happening when they run into each other? They're falling what? Falling over. <laughs> Has anybody ever played bubble soccer like that before? Or been to like a park or something playing it? Good. Who thinks we should vote for it for PBIS Day? I think so. I think we should have that. All right, so just like what happened in our vid a video, when you're doing bumper cars, when one bumper car hits another, energy is transferred to the passengers and they feel a change in motion. So your body like jerks or it stops. The impact of the collision may stop the cars and cause them to change direction. Well, can I jump in for a minute? Yes, go ahead, so Ms. Glendon. We've been doing a lot of that talking where we're talking about the bouncing back and forth, right? Yeah. And then Miss Kennedy and I had our bubbles on, and we were like running at the same speed of boom, we could do that. Right. Or, all right, we're gonna go. Boom. Oh my goodness, what happened in that direction? What happened to me? Why did I fly? Why did I go flying and not Miss Glandon? Tatum, why did I go flying? She hit me, but what about our mass? What about maybe the mass of both of us? And our, speed. Right, and our speed. Um, Miss Landon was going faster than you were. Uh huh. And you were just standing there. Okay. So you lost your balance because of her speed. What kind of energy did I have when I was standing there? And I was just standing. There's two different types. I was just standing there. Izzy. Stored energy. Stored energy. Does anybody remember what that vocabulary word is for stored? Sky? Potential. Yes, potential energy. So. In what direction did Miss Kennedy move when I bumped into her and she wasn't moving? What direction did she move, Jojo? Good reverse, right? Reverse. Very good. All right, so we are going to jump right into our challenge for today. Here's our question. What happens when a marble released from different heights collides with an index card? All right. Open up your um, science folders and take out, please, your investigation student recording sheets. Mm -hmm. 
Now, when we start talking about the different things we're going to use to make this happen, we're going to use marbles. Now, your ramp can be a binder, or you can use books. You can use whatever you're able to get to in the classroom. You also are going to have an index card. Every group is going to have an index card. You're going to have masking tape and one meter stick. Now, this is how yours should look. Is yours going to look exactly like this? No. No, but should it look somewhat similar? Yes. Yes. All right. So, let's show and demonstrate what I am asking you to do. So, I'll use my hawk bucks. I'll use my hawk bucks here. So, what am I going to use this as? What, if, what do you think I'm going to use this as in this picture? Austin. Yes, this is going to be my books. This is going to be what I'm going to lay my ramp or my incline on. So whatever it is, you don't have to build it so high. You can just make it low. So, so everyone is able to see. Here's my books. Here's my stack. Now, here's my clipboard or here's my ramp, my incline. My meter stick, you are fine. There, my index card. Do I place my index card? Look at the picture. Is the index card all the way at the back of the meter stick? No. It's at the very what? Front. Front or the beginning? Front. Well, either or. Yep, front or beginning. Now, here's my marble. It says high, middle, and low. So we're going to do three different trials, three different trials, taking our ball and releasing it from the high position. Oh, we need a catcher. <laughs> Zoe, can you be my catcher for me, please? Stand at the end of the table. So that was my high. Did my index card move a little bit? Yes. yes. And I'm looking here. My meter stick is flipped on inches. We are measuring in centimeters, so make sure your meter stick is on the centimeter side. Looks like here it rolled 12 inches. Ooh, let me add that to my data. Yes. Okay, so which position was she at? Uh, who, uh, who, oh, good, high. All right, so high trial one. Did you say 12? Yes, 12 centimeters. Centimeters CM. Perfect. Awesome. All right, so now I'm going to do another trial, but this time I'm going to start where? Where am I starting? I'm here. Where am I starting, Story? The middle. So I'm putting my index card. Pick it back up. Don't leave it. Put it back at the end. Start at your middle point. Oh, this time it didn't roll that far. Now you look to see where your index card ended. This time it's 13 centimeters. Gonna write that in the data chart. Notice I'm going trial one, going down our column. First and trial. What's the last one left? Everybody. Low. Low. Okay. All right. Marble in hand. I picked up my index card, brought it back to the top of my ruler. Sorry, my meter stick. So you want to catch? Oh, that little reverse. This time it was ten. Ooh. Why do you think there's Three trials. Why do you think there are three trials instead mm. of boom? There we go. There's our data. We know what's happening. Ooh. What do you think? Maybe because each time that you roll it, it might get a different amount of centimeters. Oh, okay. what are you learning in math where we try to figure out between, like, if you had three numbers and you try to find the uh, mm. assumptions? It could be a fraction, but not in this case. Mm. You imagine it's in grades. You have a group three grades in math, and you're trying to find what's the general? The fair oh, share. Oh, somebody say it. Oh. Ah. <laughs> what is it? Yes. Very good. So, oh my God, we're bringing our worlds together. Math and science. We're connecting the two. All right, so how many trials are you going to do for each? Three. Three. Make sure you do three. Now, when you have, flip your paper in your student packet. Thank you, Zoe. You may have a seat. Yes. 
flip it to your collect data chart. So all of you have a chart there that has data. It's blank. So when you do your three trials within your groups, I would have someone recording the data, a marble catcher, and someone to actually let the marble go. But also make sure you share and you take turns. Make sure we are sharing and we are taking turns. All right? So what you are going to do, I want you to get into your groups if you aren't already. Get the materials you may need and let's start building and colliding marbles. Look at your design that you created yesterday. Yep. Redoing. <laughs> let's get building. Wait, you said centimeters. Yep, centimeters. Yep, your data sheet, I got them right there. Go get yours, yep. Yep, don't make it too high because if we make it too high, will it be able to go at an incline? There you go. That works. That definitely works. So now, what are you going to mark now there? Low, middle, and what? High. Not, no, low, middle, and high. Good. Low, middle, and high. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Ooh, we got some going. Wait, wait, that's yep, yep. There we go. We found a problem. Let's flip it. Fourteen. So you guys gonna do all high one, and then you gonna do all medium, all low, or are you gonna do one at a time? One at a time. Okay. I like the thought process. Yeah, no. It's over here on my table. Oh, my car. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. And I'm not going to go. No, we have to do it like this. Because she's three times. Aiden. Grab these books and go. Here you go. Okay. What is it? Tape. Tape right here. What's your height? Low metal. Okay, separate this in three, two, one. Oh, one Oh, one and a half. So how would you? Ooh, how would you write that as a decimal instead of writing it as oh, a fraction? But instead of writing it as a fraction, how would you right now talking about math? How would you convert it to a decimal? Six and five. What? There you go. Six and five tips. Love it. Thank you. We share. Go ahead. And then you could do it. Yeah. Yep. And then what do you have to write that? So you're doing the right, mid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna just tape real quick. But now I want to get see what happens. The middle. Ooh, there we go. It went. Oh, here. Let me do this. Yeah. All right. So. Oh. Uh, okay. One more. Four. What does it say? What kind of graph we're gonna use, Tatum? What kind of graph are we gonna make? Line graph. We gotta come up with a title for our graph, which I wanna call it. Okay, speed. Okay, speed. What are we gonna call ours? The girls calling their speed. What are y'all calling yours? I think of a good title. You gotta get creative. We're all on the same part. We're time. We're ready to analyze our data. First thing it says. What kind of graph are we gonna be creating? What kind of graph are we creating, Tyler? We're creating a line graph, a line graph. So we have to make sure we have a title along with labels for both the X and Y axis. So on my X axis, I would have the labels of what? What would I wanna have on my X axis? On my Y, I'm gonna have maybe some numbers. So what would I have on my X? Tyler, your hand went up and then you put it down, but I'm gonna call on you. The amount of trials. Now, does it mean amount of trials just for any of them, or is it trial one, two, and three? Good, trials one, two, and three. So, here's what your graph should look like. Just like Tyler said, we have 
our centimeters going up on the left hand side. We start at zero, you don't see it here, but it starts here at zero. And what are we counting by each time? What is it counting by each time it's going up? Leah, it's counting by tens. So let's make our graph or our chart look just like this one. Albert, what was the how many centimeters did your group get for your high position for your first trial? 14 centimeters. 14 centimeters. So if I'm Albert's group, I'm going to come and find 14 centimeters using my green. Is 14 going to be less than 10 or is it more than 10, everybody? More than 10. More than 10. But is it less than 15 or more than 15? Less. less. So I'm going to put my dot. I'm on trial one. I'm putting my dot right there. So, Andy, yes. Are we making a bar graph or are we making a line graph? We're making a line graph. We are making a line graph. So, you don't want to make a bar to go all the way up to the top, but just make one dot. So, whatever your data is from this group, your first trial, how, how, many, did you, uh, how many centimeters was that? 21. So, how much are you going to put on your line graph? 21, so find 21, make your dot using your color. What do I do with my three dots? What do I do, Sky? Connect the dots. Does anybody have any thoughts? Why were the numbers different? Why did we go from a 20 to a 10 to a 20 from in the high? Mm. I don't know that there's a right answer. Let's yeah. hear your ideas. Yes. Because everyone's ramps were different. Like, one of them there was like with this, but then the other people which were just kind of like smaller. Good. So let me okay. clarify. So, my friend over here, his high number was 50 centimeters. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if you noticed his ramp was like all the way up here. But some of you had the same ramp all three trials, right? And you went from a 20 at the high to a 10 at the high to an 18 at a high. Why? Because everybody's a different. In your trials, why? Why could that be? What do you think, Aiden? Because that's just a bigger model. Oh. Mm. Uh, they mm. happened to actually have two marbles, and they realized that the heavier marble did push the car hard further, and they had to adjust that because that wasn't an independent variable. That was just the same. Maybe it's the way you're letting the marble down. Ooh, say that louder to the people in the back. Maybe it's the way you're letting the marble down. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, we did train. We did trade marble rollers, didn't we? Yeah. What if one person releases it? lightly or in a different spot or what if there was a bump in the ramp and what if the next person maybe released it a little higher oh that's a fantastic idea what variable is that when you change when that's what we're we're measuring we measured the what we measured what what did we what did we measure we measured in centimeters but what did we measure in centimeters the distance of what the di distance that the index card travel. But if I'm using different people each time, each time, so it wasn't the same person letting the marble roll each time, what changed? We have direction and we have, what's the other component of motion? Yeah, speed. 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 The speed changed. Yes. Thank you so much for joining my class today. I hope you enjoyed it all.